Batkai range of mountains on the Assam-Burma frontier. It is wild country, generally impassable, and sparsely settled by hill tribesmen. In this rugged area, it was necessary to establish a line of forward observation posts and maintain a 24-hour aircraft warning service. The personnel at the mountain camps were to be supplied with food and equipment by means of aerial delivery. The following pictures show the establishing of the posts and later supply to them by air. At an advanced base, preparations are in progress for the difficult journey to the observation posts. Initial supplies and equipment are being loaded into a trailer. The first stage of the trip is by jeep. Indian road coolies are employed to widen and repair the narrow trails so that the jeep can get through. Here, for example, they've constructed a bamboo corduroy bridge over a swampy area. Making its way along rough trails and through mountain streams, the expedition goes as far as possible by jeep. The second part of the journey is made by means of pack elephants. Supplies are transferred and loaded by the natives. Each elephant, capable of carrying 300 pounds of equipment, is guided by a mahout, or driver. Trained as carriers and used extensively in forest service, elephants are indispensable to land travel in this area. Progress is slow, an average of 10 miles a day. A point is reached where the country becomes impenetrable, except on foot. Nagas, one of the hill tribes, are employed as porters to carry the supplies. Inspection is made before starting out on the final phase of the expedition. Because of the fact that the men will be supplied by air after forward observation posts are established, only the fundamental requirements need be carried on this trip. Had the men been burdened with the problem of transporting large quantities of supplies, progress would have been slowed down considerably. But aerial transport will provide food, medical equipment, and general necessities for the personnel at the posts. The campsite is reached and the natives are paid off. Money being of no value in this region, the trading factor is goods. Shacks are constructed with the aid of native labor and the men go through the usual routine of camp activities. Eight to ten men form a forward observation post team. Special medical training has been given to one of the men so that he can administer first aid and treatments in case of accident or sickness. Work at the forward posts is on a volunteer basis, and a man may be relieved of duty whenever he so requests. There are similar camps in surrounding territory. All posts are in communication with each other by radio, are constantly on the alert to report presence of the enemy on the ground or in the air. The post established, lookout duty begins. The observer climbs a bamboo ladder which is roped to the most suitable tree in the vicinity. Here, at a height of over 100 feet, the 24-hour warning service is maintained. At any sign of enemy air activity, word is flashed by radio from the post to the air base. Back at the supply base, 
Preparations are underway for aerial supply to the posts. Natives are making baskets, which will be used as containers of the supplies to be dropped by parachute. These hand-woven baskets are made especially for this purpose. They are extremely flexible and able to sustain the drop to the ground. The baskets are wrapped in burlap covers. A diversified assortment of rations is brought from the quartermaster depot for shipment. At the airfield depot, the items are weighed. No more than from 75 to 100 pound lots can be dropped at one time for that is all the India-made parachutes will sustain. The containers are packed with straw, which protects them from splitting when they hit the ground. This particular trip will supply the posts with food, medicine, clothing, books, and games. Parachutes are attached, and the containers are ready for shipment. The material is taken by truck to a C-47, and loaded into the plane. The pilot is briefed. The map indicates the locations of the camps where the supplies are to be dropped. In flight over the rough mountain terrain, the plane heads for the outposts. A lookout in the trees watches for the ship. Informed by radio of the approximate arrival time, a signal crew is waiting. Natives, too, are interested. Fresh supplies mean new luxuries in payment for their work. Field glasses are trained on the sky, and the plane is finally sighted. The signal crew goes into action. Strips of white cloth are laid on the ground to form a panel. While this is being done, men build smoke fires so that the plane's pilot may determine wind direction and velocity. The combined ground panel and smoke signal aid in judging the proper dropping point for the containers. The plane is over the area. Altitude is lowered to approximately 300 feet and speed reduced to about 110 miles per hour. This enables the containers to lose forward speed when they are dropped from the plane. The plane circles the area and more containers are released. It is necessary to pass over the dropping point several times in order to dispose of the supplies scheduled for each outpost. The containers are gathered in by the men and the supplies taken to camp. The first post serviced, the plane starts for the second camp. Again, lookouts stand by, and when the plane is sighted, ground signals are made. Inside the plane, the containers are attached to a static line to ensure proper operation at low dropping height. They are released on signal from the pilot. The plane starts for the third and final post of this particular flight. The mission has been accomplished in less than one hour. Transportation to this spot by jeep, pack elephant, and native porters had required eight days. It is possible for a C-47 to deliver as much as 5,000 pounds of supplies and equipment in a single flight. Efficiency and alertness at forward observation posts has been greatly increased through the use of aerial supply. The men stationed at these remote outposts give the first warning of Japanese air or ground activity. Aerial supply assures the men of the forward air warning service the best available in food and equipment for the performance of this essential job.